On behalf of the Southwest Oncology Group 1500 study team, it's my pleasure today to unveil details of the PAPMAT clinical trial. The PAPMAT clinical trial is a study that's aimed at patients with metastatic papillary renal cell carcinoma. Papillary renal cell carcinoma is thought to comprise about 10 to 15 percent of renal cell carcinoma cases. Many reports to date have suggested that the biology of papillary renal cell carcinoma is characterized by alternations along the MET signaling pathway. Now, the latter served as the rationale for a completed Southwest Oncology Group clinical trial evaluating RQ197. This study, evaluating monotherapy with RQ197 versus RQ197 in combination with erlotinib, was reported as a negative study in ASCO 2015. However, RQ197 is perhaps not the purest of the MET inhibitors, and in the current study, we're exploring a number of other MET inhibitors, which appear to have much greater specificity. What you see on the next slide is data for sinitinib, which is considered the de facto standard currently for treating papillary renal cell carcinoma. This is based on both retrospective and prospective evidence. In the first series here, you see a response rate of 5% and a progression-free survival of 7.6 months. Other series, and this is a prospective series published by the MD Anderson Group, have proposed a 0% response rate and a progression-free survival of just 1.6 months. In the current study, we utilize sinitinib as a control arm, estimated progression-free survival of around six months based on data from the SUPAP trial, which is listed in the third row here, where the response rate ranges between 11 and 13 percent, and the progression-free survival varies between 5.5 and 6.6 months based on the type of papillary renal cell carcinoma being characterized. There are also several studies exploring other MET inhibitors that are currently at varying stages of clinical development. A study assessing savalitinib, including 75 patients with both type 1 and type 2 disease, has yet to report out, but there are already discussions regarding phase 3 studies based on this data set that are evolving. There's a compound Insight 280 from Novartis, uh, which is being assessed in the context of patients with hereditary or sporadic papillary renal cell carcinoma. And finally, crizotinib is being assessed in the context of patients with papillary type 1 renal cell carcinoma. This data was actually just reported at AACR 2016, and in this study, amongst those patients that were noted to be MET positive, there was an appreciable response rate noted, a confirmed PR in one of four patients, in two of four patients, and stable disease in an additional patient. In SWOG 1500, we will include patients with both type 1 and type 2 papillary renal cell carcinoma with measurable disease. Patients should have zero to one prior lines of therapy, in this study, no prior therapy with sinitinib is permitted. Patients should have a Zubrod performance status ranging between 0 and 1. Patients will be randomized in an equivalent fashion to either sinitinib, cabozantinib, crizotinib, or savalitinib, with the primary endpoint of progression-free survival. Note that in this trial, we do allow for both type 1 and type 2 disease, and if your local pathologist designates papillary type uh, uh, kidney cancer not otherwise specified, those patients would also be eligible for the current analysis. With respect to statistical considerations, we assume a progression-free survival associated with sinitinib of six months based on the data that I presented to you previously. We assume that a successful progression-free survival or appreciable PFS would be 10.5 months uh, with the comparator arms. The study has um, a one-sided alpha of 0.1 and a beta error of 0.85. We anticipate a total of 164 patients enrolled. Assuming about 10% ineligibility, we assume that we'll need about 180 patients total accrued. Accrual to this study is more limited for patients with type 2 disease. In terms of our timeline for clinical development, we've gone through various phases already, invoking support from the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, the Alliance Cooperative Group, and most recently we've engaged the NCIC CTG, allowing for participation from our Canadian colleagues. We've also received funding for extensive correlative studies looking at the role of MET alteration as a potential predictor of activity with these MET-directed therapies. At present, this represents the one randomized effort in patients with papillary renal cell carcinoma that acknowledges the biology of the disease. This is an incredibly important trial, but given the rarity of papillary renal cell carcinoma, I feel that it will be vital for us to really focus our efforts together on this study and enroll quickly. We have an aggressive goal of enrolling six to eight patients per month. And if we make this study a priority in the renal cell carcinoma investigative community, I think that we can achieve that goal. Thank you so much for your interest.